With the destruction of Romulus being a central plot point of Star Trek Picard, we've already looked into how the destruction of the homeworld has affected the Romulan and Riemann people, as well as how the Hobus supernova in 2387 shook up the galactic balance of power, so I thought it a good idea to examine how the destruction of a species' home planet has affected them in general. Hi, Rick here, and for this lore drip, we're looking into five other Star Trek races who have lost their homeworlds, either due to destruction or some events that prevents them from ever returning, and how their culture and society fared after its loss. But to begin with, let's have a couple of honourable mentions. First off, we have the Saurian species known as the Voth. I've done a whole index on their culture, but suffice to say, they left their homeworld, which in fact was Earth, millions of years before mankind even existed, and ended up creating their own society based around the notion that they are some of the oldest inhabitants in the Delta Quadrant. They have constructed vast city ships that house their populace, and their development seems to have continued unabated. And another mention is the Romulans. Wait, no, I'm not talking about the destruction of Romulus here, but rather its founding. The Romulans, millennia ago, endured self-imposed exile from Vulcan, after an event known as the Sundering, where those who disagreed with the purging of emotions left to found their own colonies. Over the years, these settled worlds went on to form one of the most powerful empires in Star Trek, so if they can survive it once, they can do it again. Still, on with the list proper, and in no particular order, we'll start with the Trabe. This species is another inhabitant of the Delta Quadrant, and they have lost their planet to the Kazon, a species that they enslaved. The Kazon overthrew the Trabe, turned their technology against them, and drove them from their world. However, that was not the end of it, as the Kazon continued to pursue the Trabe and harass them wherever they found them, driving them off any world they tried to settle. The Trabe now live a scattered life, unable to stay in one place for too long, as the Kazon themselves are nomadic and constantly moving through systems. Once considered a respected culture and a highly civilised race, the Trabe ultimately brought this vendetta upon themselves, but it's still a waste to see a society so completely reduced. Maybe one day they'll move beyond the Kazon's reach, but with them constantly being unbalanced by interference from the sects, that's unlikely. Next up, we have the Dominion Founders, also called the Changelings. This species once sought to peacefully explore the galaxy, but soon discovered that due to their ability to change into anything, they were mistrusted and even persecuted by these so-called solids, species who were confined to a single form. This led to numerous races hunting Changelings that had fled into hiding. Eventually, they settled on a new world, their original being relegated unsafe in the Amerian Nebula, and began to build their defences using the species that had offered them respite, the Vorta. Over time, they managed to establish the primary power of the Gamma Quadrant. They exercised control over all they could, destroyed that which did not conform, established order, and in this way ensured that they would never be hunted again. They abandoned their second homeworld readily to avoid destruction during the beginnings of the Dominion War, and this is probably due to their unique existence. Their great link, the bonds that they share with each other, is the only true home they need. Just as they have no real attachment to any one form, they have no true attachment to a single colony, it seems. The Zindi. Six separate races existing on one planet, all with differing temperaments, led to a planet-wide war. At the end of this conflict, they destroyed their homeworld, Zindus, by accident, and managed to flee the chaos. Most of them escaped in time, but somewhere along the way, they lost the avian Zindi, leaving only five of the distinct varieties. They searched for habitable worlds through the Delphic Expanse, but found it difficult, unable to find safe harbour. This was known as the Great Diaspora. Some worlds were founded, such as Azati Prime, but with the refugees of Zindus so spread out and searching ever outwards for a new home, many would not have found their way to these havens, if not for the Guardians. This extra-dimensional species guided the survivors to habitable worlds, and helped them build a new government, made them cooperate, and were revered with near-religious-like reverence. Their reliance on these Guardians, however, left them blind to their machinations, and they were unaware that they were in fact pawns for the species who were trying to wipe out the Federation before it was founded. So in this case, 
the aid that they received helped them, but it had a malicious intent behind it. The Zindi species also have a long history of conflict with each other, so it'd be unlikely that they'd have settled together without the Guardians. The Sulaban found themselves in a similar situation. They lost their homeworld around 300 years before the start of Star Trek Enterprise, and have been a dispersed people ever since. Their society fragmented into factions. One such notorious one was the Cabal, which resorted to criminal and nefarious means to survive. This reflected badly on the rest of the Sulaban, and they were persecuted frequently for the acts of the minority of their culture. The Cabal made matters worse by becoming the pawns of another faction in the same Temporal Cold War that the Zindi fell prey to. They were granted genetic abilities that added to the Cabal's infamy, and resulted in the segregation and imprisonment of the Sulaban on worlds like Tandar Prime. This further destroyed their culture, as those who wished no part in the Cabal's plans had everything taken from them, and the Cabal willingly cast their identity aside for promises of power from a literal shady figure. And finally, we have all of the species displaced by the Borg, but none more so than the Elorians. The Elorians are an incredibly long-lived species who were always a race who enjoyed travelling and experiencing new things, often incognito and low profile so as not to contaminate other cultures. For this reason, they had reputations as great storytellers and listeners, but they always had a place to return to to share their experiences. That is, until the Borg swept through their systems and assimilated many of them. Millions were lost or killed, and the survivors fled all over, which is a major blow for the species, as with their long lifespans, they were already few in number. The species is now mostly committed to their life as listeners, and live split up among the other races, integrating with their societies. Under normal circumstances, I'd say that this spells doom for them, as it severely reduces their chances to repopulate, but of all on this list, the Elorians have the time. Guinan is mentioned at having several children and been married 23 times in her long lifetime, but it's unknown if these children would be Elorian too, or if they were from before the loss of Eloria in the late 2200s. In summary, the destruction of a homeworld can go two ways, but often the species will reconsolidate and rebuild, unless they fall prey to outside influences. This is why I'm confident that the Romulan people will eventually reconstruct their society, as, let's face it, they've done it before, if they can avoid becoming targets for species with a bone to pick. Admittedly, with the Romulans' history, there are many who would gladly see them fall, but I don't think the Federation would let that happen. Until next time, thanks for watching. I've been Rick, and I'll see you again. Goodbye.